As we put season one of the Wheel of Time behind us, it's time to start looking forward to season two. But what do we know about Wheel of Time's second season? In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the cast for season two, some rumors about folks associated with the production, and at the end of the video, we'll talk about what might happen plot-wise in season two. Join me today as we recap everything we know about season two of the Wheel of Time so far. Quick thank you to the video sponsor, NordVPN, but more on them in a bit. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of yellow, with no major spoilers in the books, but towards the end I will be talking generally about some things. I'll be talking casting, which means I'll be mentioning characters. If you don't want to know anything that's coming, maybe turn off the video, otherwise this should be good to watch. So let's kick things off with the cast and who we know is coming back for season two. The main characters, with the exception of Barney Harris, are all back for season two. Rosamund Pike is back as Moraine Damodred, and we'll be finding out more about what happened to her at the end of season one. But more on that at the end of the video. In a Q&A with fans on Reddit, showrunner Rape Judkins mentioned the fact that Rosamund will not only be back as Moraine, but they're also making sure she stays a part of the story in some way. The necessity of that comment comes from the fact that Moraine plays a very small role in book two, with such a big star in the show and a fan favorite character, sidelining her for most of the season is not a smart idea, so they're just going to expand upon her story. This is likely the reason, actually, that they stilled her or shielded her or whatever it was that happened at the end of episode eight. That's the setup for what she'll be doing next season. Now, we'll talk more about the implication of this in the last section of the video and actually in another video I'll be making, but... Just as Rosamund is back as Moraine, Daniel Henney is also back as Lan. And with much the same as Moraine, Lan has a very much reduced role in the second book of the series. His storylines are likely going to mirror Moraine's in the second season, as they always do. Yosha Stradowski, Madeline Madden, Zoe Robbins, and Marcus Rutherford are all back, playing Rand, Egwene, Nynaeve, and Perrin, respectively. Now, the noted change here is the absence of Barney Harris, who played Matt Cawthon in season one of the show. The much reported on absence of Barney Harris in the final two episodes of the first season was due to the fact that he did not return to the production after the second COVID delay they had. For those of you that are not aware, the production of season one of The Wheel of Time was plagued with production stoppages and delays due to the pandemic, and they did have two major work stoppages. On the second stoppage, Barney did not return to the production for undisclosed reasons, and that forced last second rewrites to the story the removal of his character from the final two episodes, and the moving around of basically everything that was set to happen. Fortunately, Matt Cawthon will be returning in season two, but this time with a new actor. Irish actor Donal Finn has been cast in the role of Matt Cawthon for the rest of the series. Now, I previously covered this on the channel, so for more information on that change and on Donal Finn as an actor, check out the video linked up here somewhere. But I am actually excited to see Donal as Matt. I think he has a more playful side than maybe Barney does, and I think people expect that out of Matt. He also, though, has a huge acting range. So I think this is a very good casting, but then again, they've been pretty much on point with all of the casting so far. I haven't seen too many complaints about the casting. But who else is back for season two? Well, we know that Hamad Anamashan is back as loyal, and that was confirmed by Rafe Judkins in his Reddit Q&A. So although it looks like he was stabbed by Fane at the end of season one, it does appear that he will survive. And speaking of Fane, he is also back, although not 100% confirmed by the show. We would expect to see Johan Myers back as Pot on Fane. I think his departure at the end of season one is likely one of the main drivers for the story in season two. Now again, that's not confirmed, but Johan Myers has absolutely no presence in social media, so he's very difficult to track for those of us that follow the show. But odds are he is back. Also back that we know of is Alexandra Willem as Tom Marilyn. Now, although this has not been confirmed by the show, it has been reported that he is on set, so obviously that applies a season two appearance. My guess as to why this hasn't been announced is the ambiguous way that his fate was left during season one, and the showrunners don't want to give away what actually happened to him. Many of our Aes Sedai are back as well. Kate Fleetwood, a personal favorite performance of mine from season one, is back as Leandrin. Also back are Priyanka Bose as Alana Mosvani, her warders Ivan, played by Emmanuel Amani, and Maskeem, played by Taylor Napier. We also have the Amerlin seat, Swan Sanche, played by the amazing Sophie Akinato, and of course her Keeper of Chronicles, Leon Sharif, played by Jennifer Chian Garcia. 
someone who I hope to see much more of in season two. Also in our returning cast, we have Kai Alexander, who will be back playing Min. We know this because of a new actress named Haruka Kuroda that has been announced to be playing Min's aunt, which I would guess lives in Tarvalon, where I would expect Min to return after her departure from Faldara. Guy Roberts is returning as Uno. I know many thought that he was killed at the end of season one, but his body is not there to be found so it can be assumed that he either lived or was not a part of Fane's attack there while they were digging up the horn. And finally, rounding out our returners, we have Forrest Forrest returning as the Dark One, although many book readers actually know his true identity. He was excellent in the parts that he was in, so this is a very welcome return from my perspective. So that covers who is coming back, but who's a new addition to season two? Well, we have quite a few and some super exciting characters that are also going to be introduced. Let's start with some of the more minor characters that we know about. I already mentioned Haruka Kuroda being cast as Min's aunt, but we also have Amas Federalicious. I'm probably butchering that name. He has been cast as Masima, a Shinarin soldier who goes on to have a very large role in the story later on. Won't spoil anything. Greg Chillingnan has been cast as a Shinarin lord, Ingtar Shinoa, who is a fairly major character from Book 2 of The Wheel of Time. Also new in Season 2 are Raquel Cipriano as a novice in the White Tower, and Marie France Alvarez as Celestine, a sister of the Yellow Aja from the books. Now, we don't actually know that she's the Yellow Aja, we just know her name, but that is a character from the books. Will Tudor has been cast as Lord Barthanes, who will play a small but important role in the show if the character is anything like the book character. Now, this does give us a small clue at, as to some plot lines in the show, but again, We'll talk about that when we get to the plot part of the video. Also, we have Melissa James cast as Elnor, which is the name of Nynaeve's mother from the books. I would be curious if this is part of her accepted test, and it's a flashback to Nynaeve's youth, or a possible future if her parents had lived. We also have some other actors and actresses associated with the show, but we don't know what their role is. Gary Beadle, Saleh Saleh, Natasha Jaya Hendry, Laura Crowhurst have all been cast. No confirmation as to who they're playing. Jessica Boone is another actor that we do not have a name for in the show, but she was seen with the side of her head shaved, so that could have something to do with the Sean Chan. But the big news here is the five other castings that we don't have confirmed character names for, but we can make pretty good educated guesses. First, we have Karima McAdams. She has been cast in an unknown role, but it's been speculated by a number of sources now that she's going to be playing Lanfear for season two. She certainly looks as though she could play Lanfear to me, and sorry, Matt Hatch, she looks a lot more like Lanfear than you do. Also, we have Natasha O'Keefe and Mira Sayal, both cast as characters that Rafe Judkins described as two of the most important characters for the rest of the series. Now, based on that comment and some other information, it's safe to say that Natasha O'Keefe is going to be playing Elida, and Mira Sayal is going to be playing none other than fan favorite character, Baron Mathwin. All three of these castings, I believe, are good ones. I will get into these actresses' backgrounds in another video, but needless to say, if they are who I think they are here, I think these are great castings, and they're going to give us a more of an idea about the plot of season two as well, which we'll get to. We also know that an actress has been cast to play Avienda, but we have no idea who that is yet. But the biggest casting news that we have so far, and one that we know is confirmed, is that Sierra Coveney is going to be playing Elaine Tracan for season two. We've known this one was for a while, and it was announced by Rafe on a live stream. She looks perfect. She looks exactly like Elaine Tracan. Pretty excited about this one. Now, when it comes to season two of The Wheel of Time, we only know the title of the very first episode, A Taste of Solitude. It appears, at least for season two, that Amazon is going to go with the eight episodes again, meaning that we have four different filming blocks. And as with season one, there appear to be different directors for each of the different filming blocks. We know that director Thomas Knapper is going to be directing episodes one and two. Block two filming, so episodes three and four, will be done by Sanaa Hamri, and Mahav Rillo will be directing episodes five and six. And while this is unconfirmed, it does appear also that Sanaa Hamri will be directing episodes seven and eight of season two. Additionally, we know that David Moxness is back as the director of photography, as well as Lauren Balfe confirmed on Twitter that he will be back as the composer for the show's score. Another thing we know for sure from Rafe Judkins is the intention of Amazon 
in terms of the release. He mentioned on his Reddit Q&A that Amazon's intention is to get the show released in a reasonable time frame from the end of its previous season. They do not want long waits between seasons. That's a mandate for all of their shows. Now, given that they are finishing up the initial shoots for season two right now, and that that should be complete within a month or so, it's possible that we will get the show around the same time as season one, in November. Now that is not confirmed, and I would personally not mind if they delayed the release of the show into 2023, if that means that they're going to have the proper time for post-production and any reshoots that they need to do. I am all for quality over timeliness. Now before we talk about what we know about the plot for season two, let's talk about NordVPN. NordVPN is the number one VPN service in the world, and for good reason. But what is a VPN, Nablus? Well, a VPN protects your privacy while you're on the internet. It acts as an intermediary between you and your internet service provider. It hides your data in your browsing history. It keeps your online activity your business. This also keeps your internet service provider from selling your data or nefarious people from targeting you online. Another cool thing is it lets you get around geo-locked areas, meaning you can watch content from other countries from your house just by logging into a VPN from the country you want to watch me from. Nord has been a partner of the channel for a while now, and I was a user of the service long before they were a sponsor. You should absolutely have a VPN if you use the internet, and the great news is, is that NordVPN is going to give my viewers a massive discount on their service. Just click the link in the description of the video, you're going to get NordVPN for a fraction of what it normally costs. It's honestly a great deal. And just by protecting your own browsing history, you are also helping support the channel. Thank you to NordVPN, and let's get back to the video. So lastly here, let's talk about what we know about the plot of Season 2. We don't have a lot confirmed, but based on some of the other information we've received, there is cause to make some educated guesses. We have heard Rafe talk about the fact that there will be parts of books two and three in this season. He mentioned some of the characters will be following their book two arcs, and some will be on their book three arcs. Now this is completely understandable in a sense, as it's doubtful that we're going to be getting one book a season based on the fact there are 15 books. But books two and three share similar plot elements. They are different though, and attempting both is going to be interesting to see how it plays out, as they involve the same characters ending up in the same places at the end of both books. So in book two, that is Foam, that's where they all end, and in book three, they all end up in Tear. They're probably not going to be able to adapt it in such a way that all the characters end up in both of those places. I believe, based on what we know of the characters' cast, it's safe to say that the hunt for the Horn of Valir will be the main driver of the season two story arc, as the cast of characters that they have seems to indicate just that. I think this will closely mirror book two and its plot. I think the girls are going to return to the White Tower and begin their training, and I would expect that we would see accepted tests, as well as the quest to meet the Shan Chan and a certain double cross from a certain person. I think we will also see another character's captivity this season as well. Now, Rand is on a quest that is unknown at this point. I could completely speculate, but I would venture that his plot will probably follow closely his Season 3 plot, with a mix of some Season 2 and a special companion named Selene. Somehow, they will have to incorporate Matt Cawthon back into the group, and I think Tom will be a part of this as well, given the rapport that Tom and Matt built in Season 1. I think that we will see another plot with Moraine and Lan, with Moraine somehow trying to either regain her ability to channel or further help Rand in her own way despite her new limitations. As I mentioned, she's mostly absent from book two, so they need to give her something to do. Outside of those things, though, we really don't know much about the season two plot. Stay tuned to this channel, as we will have the return of the weekly Wheel of Time news, in which I will cover all of the TV news, community news, book news, and all things Wheel of Time related. That will come out each and every Friday. Also, make sure to pay attention here, as there will soon be some major announcements concerning thegreatflight.com. If you are not aware, I'm actually hiring some folks to help with the site. You can check out the current job offerings if you are a writer or a social media person at thegreatflight.com forward slash job application you can apply there i'm going to start doing some interviews this week for those roles so apply there if you are interested make sure to leave a comment on the video and let me know what you think about all the things that we know about season two so far and make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel to be updated when i release new wheel of time content and lore content i'm gonna have tons of both coming out and you don't want to miss any of it thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel up on the screen right now are my higher level patrons. Thank you all for your support. I really could not do this without you. If you want to support the channel, check out the Patreon in the description of the video. And lastly, check out this video here about the Matt Coffin recasting. If you want to learn more about what went down, 
and more about Don Wolfman, the actor replacing Barney Harris. Thank you everybody for watching and until next time, peace out.